what size pipe should you design your next irrigation system with? And should you use polyethylene pipe or PVC pipe? And should it be schedule 40, SDR 21, class 160, class 200, class 315? What should you use and why should you use it? Today, we're gonna look at a little bit of that using Hunter's friction loss charts. I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and you are watching Sprinkler TV. So before we get started, I have one, might be a reminder, it's a little bit more of a factoid, if you will. So when we're talking about polyethylene pipe, like this here with this blazing saddle on it, polyethylene pipe is measured and determined by the inside dimension, because other than blazing saddles like this, insert fittings go in the pipe. So a one inch poly pipe, regardless of the type of pipe or the wall thickness, the inside diameter is always gonna be the same with one inch pipe so that the insert fitting fits. PVC, on the other hand, like this ma massive stick of Schedule 40, PVC pipe has a standard outside diameter or OD because PVC fittings go on the exterior and polyethylene fittings go on the interior. So keep that in mind when you are just considering your pipe and what size you have, outside fittings or insert fittings. Let's talk for a moment about pressure loss and friction loss before I get into showing you the tables and charts and how to read them. It's important to remember that pressure on an irrigation system can only be increased with a pump and with gravity right? Downhill, you get more pressure. And pressure can be lost through the system by gravity going uphill or friction loss. And friction loss means resistance, fittings, backflow preventers, water meter, and pipe. Anything that can cause friction will reduce the amount of pressure that you have. And it's referred to as friction loss. And so we're gonna read these charts and there's a magic number that is important to keep in mind. And that's five feet per second, five feet per second, five feet per second. I probably should have come up with some kind of a jingle for that, but just remember five, five feet per second. And that is the velocity or the speed of the water that is recommended to not to exceed for irrigation systems. So everything we look at in this chart is for five feet per second. It could be entirely possible to put 50 gallons a minute through a pipe like this, but the water would be coming, would be screaming, coming out so fast that you probably blow a fitting if you tried to move that much water through a pipe. And if you were moving that much water through a pipe, you would have a hell of a lot of friction loss. So let's, on that note, I'm gonna flip my screen over and let's take a look at the friction loss charts and how to read them. So in this example, I have Hunter Industries friction loss charts and there will be a link to this chart in the description. So you can click down below and print or save or just use a copy of this friction loss charts for your own calculations. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is go through the chart, show you what's here. Page one is water meters. So this can tell you the pressure loss through the average size water meters. This is actually something that a lot of people forget about when they're designing the system that the water has to pass through the water meter and there will be pressure loss due to friction through that meter. So for example, a five eighths inch meter that is running, let's say 10 gallons a minute, will have a 3.7 PSI loss running through the meter, okay? So we have our water meter pressure loss. Then we have different types of pipe from type copper to type K copper tubing to type L copper tubing. And I'm just gonna kind of go through until we get to the most popular pipe used for irrigation systems, which is either PVC or poly, just like I showed you in the beginning of this video, PVC or poly three most common PVC types. Number one, class 160, right here. Number two, class 200, right here. And number three, schedule 40. Well, here's 315. And then we have schedule 40 here. So let's start up with class 160. And the magic number in all of this is five feet per second. Five feet per second, okay? I may have mentioned that at the beginning of this video. Actually, I think I did. So just remember, five feet per second, and that's what these charts are all about, okay? So you start at the top of the chart with the pipe size that you are using. Let's just stick with one inch for these examples. Here's a one inch pipe. Then on the left-hand side of the chart, 
you are going to you are going to find your gallons per minute okay so this would be typically you'll want to use the largest zone you're designing for okay so let's say for example the largest zone on your system is 10 gallons a minute so you'll drop down on the left hand side to 10 gallons a minute and then you'll start scrolling to the right and if you notice this area that is brown this is kind of like the no-go area you want to stay in the white because anything in the brown is water moving faster than five feet per second and that's where you can have damage in your piping structure all right so let's take 10 gallons a minute and let's go to the right and you could, on this particular pipe, class 160, use three quarter inch pipe, okay? Water would be moving at 4.93 feet per second, which is acceptable, because remember, we're trying to stay under five feet per second. However, you would have 4.79 PSI loss for every 100 feet of pipe, okay? That is what this chart is telling you. 4.79 PSI loss when running 10 gallons a minute over 100 feet of pipe, okay? So let's say you are running 500 feet of pipe. You would take 4.79, multiply it times five for 500 feet of pipe, and you would have 25 PSI loss. Now that is a lot of PSI loss. If you're only starting with 50 PSI and you needed to run 500 feet, you probably don't wanna use three quarter inch pipe because the friction loss is so high. So here's what happens when you jump over to one inch pipes. Remember, we're staying with 10 gallons a minute. We're moving over to the right from three quarter inch to one inch. And at one inch pipe, you only lose 1.38 PSI for that same distance, for that 100 feet of pipe. And if you go to inch and a quarter, you're only losing not even a half a PSI per 100 feet. And on inch and a half pipe, it's only a quarter of one PSI that you're losing. So depending on how much pressure you have at your source and how far you need to go and how many gallons you're flowing, you can use this chart to determine your PSI loss. Okay, the other thing that, uh, that we'll do is let's look at PVC versus poly, right? Let's stick with our one inch, 10 gallons a minute, 1.38 PSI loss for one inch PVC. And let's scroll down and let's find our polyethylene pipe. There's 315, there's schedule 40. And actually let's stop at schedule 40 for a moment because I do want to point this out. If you notice with schedule 40, we are at... 2.63 PSI loss, but on class 160, we were only at 1.38. So with using schedule 40 pipe, you have twice the friction loss because schedule 40 actually has the same thickness. So on a smaller schedule 40 pipe, the actual in, inside diameter is smaller. And so therefore you have more friction loss because it's like using a smaller pipe. Okay, let's keep going to our polyethylene. Here we go, polyethylene, one inch poly, 10 gallons a minute, 2.73, okay? I've already forgotten what we had before, but we'll put it right here and overlay it on this video. One inch PVC, class 160, versus one inch polyethylene pipe. Let's look at those PSI loss differences. And that's typically not the reason somebody chooses poly or PVC, but it is a consideration if pressure for you at your site, your home, your business, whatever that might be, is an issue and you don't want to use a booster pump, you may decide what type of pipe and definitely going to choose the size of pipe to optimize that, that PSI loss. So I'm going to close this screen capture and catch you right back on the other side. Excellent. So that is how to read a friction loss chart. And as a reminder, before you install and before you design your irrigation system, you want to take a static pressure reading with a pressure gauge like this, although this one's for drip, it only goes to 30 PSI. You want to take a static pressure reading and then you want to start at your source. What size pipe is coming into your building? What happens to the water? Does it go through the water meter, then through the irrigation submeter, then through a backflow? You wanna make note of all these components. And then you can determine how many gallons a minute you have, how far does the water need to go, and you can use those friction loss charts to determine what the pressure loss is going to be from the beginning 
to the end, and that'll help you determine what size pipe, right? Maybe you do need inch and a half pipe if you have really low pressure and you don't want to install that booster pump. So I hope that helps. And if you want help with any other irrigation design or service questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can contact us by phone, chat, email, text message. And until the next sprinkler supply store product overview, nerd talk, we will see you then and happy sprinkling.